Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, looks like we have a overflow crowd all the way down to Clay Avenue. It's a great morning here at the university. Uh, my name is Tom McKinnon. I'm the vice president for university advancement, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today for an important announcement that will even further strengthen the Catholic and Jesuit education we provide our students here at the University of Scranton. I would like to thank the members of our board of trustees who are with us, as well as many of our faculty and students. Your presence is greatly appreciated. I'd like to introduce Father Scott Pilars of the Society of Jesus, our president here at the University of Scranton. As you know, from the very beginning, Jesuit education has been and continues to be firmly grounded in the humanities. The earliest Jesuit schools developed their pedagogy based on adapting Renaissance humanism, which used literature to understand the essence of what it means to be human. This was the way the earliest Jesuits were themselves educated. The literature, which included works of poetry, drama, and history, was used as a foundation to develop articulate, ethical, and socially responsible individuals who, in the words of St. Ignatius, would go and set the world on fire. Nearly 500 years later, this tradition of education, rooted in the humanities, continues today at Jesuit colleges throughout the world, and especially here at the University of Scranton. And it's not only Jesuits who see the value of the liberal arts. I'd like to share a couple quotes with you. It's not so very important for a person to learn facts, for that does not really, for that you do not really need a college. A person can learn them from books. The value of an education in a liberal arts college is not learning many facts, but the training of the mind to think of something that can be not learned in textbooks. That's Albert Einstein. Another quote, the reason that Apple is able to create products like the iPad is because we've always tried to be at the intersection of technology and the liberal arts, said Steve Jobs. Another, I dare say, brilliant business executive and Scranton accounting graduate also recognized the importance of the humanities as part of a Scranton education and generously supported this cause with a million dollar donation. I announced the gift from University Trustee Jim Slattery and his wife Betsy at the inauguration ceremony back in September. Today I am privileged to make another announcement. This time it is a recognition of Jim's parents. His father, Francis, is here with us today. and We welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the great honor to announce today the naming of the Gale and Francis Slattery Center for the Humanities. Mr. Slattery, thank you so much for your presence today. And thank you for the grace of understanding the value of a Catholic and Jesuit education for your children. The center will be in this Victorian house and will be open in the fall semester following renovations. I wish to thank Jim and Betsy for all they do to support the transformative education that we offer here at Scranton for their leadership and guidance, for their service with the President's Business Council, and for their generous support of the Humanities Center here at the University. Because of your vision, generations of students will have reason to thank you both as well. So Jim, God bless you and your family. God bless Catholic and Jesuit education, and God bless the University of Scranton. Thank you, Father Pars. 
I too want to extend our thanks, Jim, to you and Betsy, and welcome you here, Mr. Slattery. It's my pleasure now to introduce Jim Slattery, who's a member of our Board of Trustees and Chief Operating Officer of Melrose PLC. Jim. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming this morning. Thank you, Father Pilars, for those kind words. Thank you for the members of the Board of Trustees who um, are here in attendance. Um, I'm honored to be with you all this morning to share a few words about how this gift came to be. About 12 months ago, my wife Betsy and I made the decision that we were going to make a gift in order to further Catholic education. Betsy and I are both products of Catholic education and we have become advocates for them in most of our charitable giving. All three of our sons have attended Catholic schools. Our oldest is finishing his second year at Santa Clara University. Our middle son is going to be a senior at Our Lady of Mercy Catholic High School in Georgia, where we live, and our youngest will be a freshman there next year. We have our, watched our children thrive in school and grow into young men who love their faith. Having decided Catholic education was where the gift was to go, we had to decide where and for what. As you all know, liberal arts institutions and the humanities in particular have been under attack. Pundits will question the value of the humanities. It is a daunting challenge that administrators of these institutions face. It is especially true at Catholic institutions and yes, here at the University of Scranton. From its origins, Jesuit education has given the humanities a central and essential role in the education and the formation of its students and its engagement with the larger world. Jesuits interacted with their communities through theater, public debate, and oratory. They taught a deeply theological process of discernment through the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola. They cultivated an ideal of service and accompaniment as contemplatives in action, based on an understanding of contemplative practice and common humanity. It struck Betsy and I that places like Scranton are special because they are Jesuit. And as such, the humanities need to be lived and promoted and not merely viewed as a line item in a budget. At about this same time, Father Pilars and Tom presented us an idea about establishing a center for humanities here at Scranton. We met over dinner and Scott brilliantly articulated his vision for the center of humanities here at Scranton. And before dinner was over, we had made our commitment to Scott and promised to do all we could do to promote this project. So you might ask, where does this love for Catholic education come from? For me, it comes from my parents, Gail and Frank Slattery. My mother went to 12 years of Catholic school. Uh, my father did not. From an early age, I heard stories from my father about how much he envied the kids who got to go to Catholic school when he did not. He vowed that whatever it took, his children would be able to go. At times, that meant he worked two jobs. I'm proud to say that all three of us went through Catholic grammar school and high school, and we have a lot to be thankful for. When it came to college, I didn't know where I wanted to go, and someone at school mentioned Scranton. In the fall of 1985, my dad and I drove up here and we met with Father Mack, who's not here today, but um, he's recuperating from a minor surgery yesterday. Um, and we were given a tour by a very energetic tour guide named Ed Berta. By the time our visit and tour were over, I was sold. And more importantly, Father Mack won over my father. By this time in life, my father's goals had moved on. He knew that a college education was an invaluable thing to receive. And again, he vowed that the three of us would graduate and we would do so without any loans that needed to be repaid. I'm proud to say we all did. It is only now that I realize what a valuable gift that was. Now it is our turn to do the same for our children and as many other students we can help along the way. I believe a Catholic Jesu Jesuit education is transformational and we need to figure out how to keep it accessible to as many students as possible. So dad, and please tell mom, thank you for being so passionate about Catholic education and giving up so much to make sure we were given it 
and thank you for sacrificing what you did to give me the privilege of a University of Scranton education. Thank you very much. Jim, thank you. I know I speak for everyone here on the lawn and the porch to tell you how touching your remarks are and, and how grateful we are for your support and to have you here today, Mr. Slattery and, and Gal. Thank you. Now to talk about the center and its initiatives, let me introduce Dr. Jeff Gingrich, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University, and Dr. Yamile Silva, Silva Associate Professor and Chair of World Languages and Cultures. Thank you, good morning. Uh, I'm here to address you today uh, in, with this amazing occasion to highlight what has motivated my colleagues and myself to come together through the Humanities Initiative. On campus, my colleagues and myself in the departments of World Languages and Cultures, Theology, Philosophy, History, English, and Theater engage every day in the sort of teaching and research which provides the foundation of our university and the universities across the world. The, the humanities are foundational and fundamental because they engage with big questions about the human experience. From arts to politics, the humanities ask our students to be intellectually curious while driving connections between our experiences. The humanities ground our academic disciplines and pursuits at the University of Scranton, while also asking us to engage on a global and historical level. Through the humanities, our students learn about the values of different cultures, about what goes into writing a play, about what history is made, about the pursuit of the truth. By understanding our past, our students understand the world they live in, and we can help them imagine the future. This isn't a utopian vision, because after all, utopia literally means no place. We are exercising a vision for the here and now. Philosophy, philosophy points us toward questions of ethics in political, technological, and social arenas. The study of culture and literature enriches our lives with metaphors and continues the stories of our shared human experience. It's not a lofty pursuit. It's the blood and bonds of our intellectual and spiritual pursuit and the mission of the University of Scranton. We all know that humanistic subjects had been at the head of a liberal arts education since the ancient Greeks that first used them to educate their citizens. And they had been central to Jesuit education, as Father Pilar just mentioned it. With the humanities, we educate independent thinkers. And in times of polarization and insecurity, educating independent thinkers is the sort of thing that often comes under scrutiny. But even when treats appears, we have to return to that age-old question. What good is an unexaminated life? What happens to a people cooped off from culture? What university doesn't seek to transform his students and their potential? Today, we are here to affirm our commitment to one another, to the pursuit of truth, to the exploration of art and culture, and to the future of the university and our students. We do this animated by empathy, a unique human trait which make us to think of our connection rather than our divisions. For all these reasons, and because we need the humanities more than ever in this post-truth era, on behalf of my colleagues, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to Gene Slattery for his generous gift that would help us to pursue our goal to highlight and continue working to make the humanities an essential component of our students' education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Silva. What a beautiful and profound way to describe the humanities and what we want to do here. I want to join Tom and Father Pilars, Dr. Silva, and all of us in thanking Jim for your generous gift to establish the Center for the Humanities at the University of Scranton. This is a great day for us. A lot of people do wonder why a Center for Humanities is important in a day and age in which professional degrees seem to be on the rise, and I think everyone who has spoken has already beautifully explained why the humanities are so important to our education at this time at the University of Scranton. As a Jesuit institution, we cannot truly be Jesuit or Ignatian without the humanities at the core of what we do. So I'm very proud of the fact that our university is choosing to double down on humanities at a time when other institutions are deleting, literally deleting the humanities from their curriculum. You know, in higher education these days, we hear so much about outcomes-based assessment. But there are no better outcomes to assess than our graduates. Our outstanding alums, such as Jim, have been shaped by the humanities, and we look to model and strengthen this as we move forward with the center. The University of Scranton will not only send out students to become excellent scholars in the humanities, PhDs in the humanities who are writers, thinkers, and teachers, but we'll also send out business professionals who are more ready to lead corporations to success in ethical ways. We'll send students to law school and medical school to become doctors and lawyers who can critically think through complex problems in profound ways that help to create a better world around us. We'll send out artists who will help to change the world through aesthetics and writers who will engage readers in ways that transform lives. When Father Pilars and I arrived at Scranton this summer, there was a group of faculty who had set the foundation for this work. And I want to especially thank the Humanities Initiatives faculty for all they've done to create new initiatives that have already expanded the humanities at the universities in very, very important ways. I want to thank Dean Brian Kniff for his leadership with this group and his steadfast commitment to Jesuit education and to Father Pilars for his vision for this center. There's no better leader for this institution at this time. I want to welcome Greg Jordan, who will become the executive director of the center this fall. Greg, we're glad to have you join the team. But mostly, I want to thank Jim and Betsy for their generous gift to launch the Center for Humanities, but also for your leadership to the university in so many other ways. And to your parents, Gail and Frank, uh, Mr. Slattery, it's so great to have you with us today for your commitment to Catholic education and for bringing Jim to us as a student and now as, as an alum and board member. This is a great day to celebrate the announcement of the Center for Humanities, but a great day to celebrate the humanities in general and our love of learning. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Dr. Silva and Dr. Gingrich. Again, it was great to see such an overflow crowd here uh, to celebrate this special day in the history of the university. This concludes our formal program. Thank you. Thank you.